Hello, and welcome back to the Rock Road Academy. Today, we are continuing the complete guide to Cubescape. Cubescape is a tool that allows you to scan your Kubernetes manifests and clusters to detect misconfiguration and security violations using all the popular, is that the right word? Popular security posture frameworks like MITRE, SIS, NSA, Armobest, etc. Today, we're going to take a look at building our own framework. You can do this on easy mode with Armo Cloud, and we'll walk through exactly that. However, I want to dive in to what it takes to build your own framework on your own machine with your own JSON and no cloud. But let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at easy mode first. So this is Armo Cloud which you'll have seen from the first two videos in this course. We're going to click on my face and go to settings. From here, you'll see that I have three inactive clusters. We're just going to ignore that for today. On the left, we have posture, which has frameworks and controls. So let's click on frameworks. Here, you'll see that we have all controls, Armo Best, DevOps Best, MITRE, NSA, and SIS. We are going to use the new framework button to create our new framework. See, I told you this was easy. So let's name this Rockcode Cloud. I'm calling it Rockcode Cloud because this is the framework we are creating using the cloud. And I don't want it to clash with what we do on the command line shortly. You can give it any description you want. Funny, right? Next, you can select the controls that you want to check for. So let's search for host. We want to ensure that there is no host PID access, container host ports, or host path mounts. We click apply. And if we scroll down, we have Rockwood Cloud, any description you want with three controls. Now we can edit this whenever we want and bring in new controls whenever we want. Now, why do I think this is important? Well, I've worked with a lot of, I've worked with a lot of teams that want to improve their security posture, but they can find the default policies overwhelming. It can be quite intimidating when you see that you have so many violations across so many Kubernetes manifests, across so many Kubernetes clusters. And what they want is just the easy mode. Well, how do I just check for like the really bad stuff? Because, you know, there may only be a few rules that you want to start out with. But when you build that habit, you show people progress, this kind of change becomes a lot easier, especially when you're working with developers who just may not be accustomed to this terminology and smishy smashy language. Now, now that we have created our new framework on Armo Cloud, we can pull that down to our local CLI. All right, let's get started. The first thing you need to do to make your life a little bit easier on the CLI is to export KS account and set this to your account ID. If you're not sure where to find that, go to the cloud, click your name, and click copy. Like so. Now, you can list your frameworks. And you'll see at the bottom, we have raw code cloud. If you want to, you can cache these offline with download artifacts and you'll see it's downloaded our rockwood cloud into the current directory so if we take a look at the current directory we'll see all of the frameworks plus i have a deployment yaml some q and my own json we'll get to that in just a minute let's run kubescape scan rockwood cloud dot 
I'm saying that I want to scan that deployment.yaml in this current directory against my raw code cloud framework. And now we can see the violations. Now this is a very standard nginx deployment.yaml. We don't have resource memory limit requests, etc. I'm not doing the good security stuff to block privilege escalation. And I'm pulling it from a random Docker. Well, I'm pulling it from the Docker Hub registry. I don't have really any labels, blah, 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 blah. Thank you, Kubescape. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. And I would encourage you, and I can't stress this enough, I encourage you to use Armo Cloud, build your frameworks from there, expand on them, bake them into your CI process. We've already done a video on CI CD with Kubescape. So go watch that next if you haven't already. But, but, what if you want to do it the hard way? What if you want to build your own framework locally? using your own tooling without interacting with Armo Cloud. Unfortunately, this is all very undocumented and it took a lot of reverse engineering and by reverse engineering, I mean just scrolling through GitHub code to work out how this all works. So let's build our own framework on the command line. Now, why am I going to show you how to do this? when building a framework is so easy on Armo Cloud? Well, because I also wanted to explore and experiment with building my own controls. Armo Cloud is great for taking existing controls, packaging them up and iterating or expanding on them to secure your security posture. But if you want to write your own controls, it really means speaking to someone at Armo or filing a pull request. So what if we just want to iterate and hack on it locally? So let's take a look at the Armo best JSON that we got during the Kubescape download artifacts. And what we can see is that a framework is a JSON object. Now you probably already knew that because you've seen the downloads when I ran Kubescape download. Yeah, nah, nah. But it has an array object with controls. Each of these controls has some attributes, which we can ignore for now, and some rules. Then these rules match against resources within our cluster, and then some other mumbo jumbo. Let's take a look at all controls. Here we have forbidden container registries. It too has some rules where it wants to block certain image registries. Now you can see here that the language for this rule is Regal. If you're not familiar with Regal, it's the policy language from the Open Policy Agent project. Now, if you're thinking the existence of this flag means, hey, cool, I don't need to learn Regal. Maybe I can write my policy in another language. Unfortunately, this is the code that runs your policies. Regal and Regal 2 are the only supported languages at the moment. But maybe this will change in the future. I think it would be kind of interesting to see Starlark or common expression language as an option for writing policies. Again, we match on the resources that we want to apply this to. And the last thing that we haven't really covered is that we have the rule itself. Now this is just because this shipped as JSON, we have a complex string stored as a string value. It has new lines, it has tab characters, it has comments, it's got code. Now this is not a pleasant experience to modify your own custom framework and controls locally. But again, again, it's not made to work like that yet. This is just me hacking around on stuff that I shouldn't be hacking around on. And I thought, well, what if we wrote it in Q? We could export the queue to JSON and use the custom framework that way. And that's the path that I went down. Let's pop open the queue. Now I'm a big fan of queue. It allows us to do cool things that we can't do with JSON, YAML, and other formats that we've been stuck with for many years now. 
So I encourage you all to go and find Q tutorials online and improve your data configuration lives. First thing I do is I'm setting a private variable. Now I'm not going to go into Q in a lot of detail, but understand that a private variable is anything with an underscore. When I run Q export, that will be wiped off the face of the planet. We're using it to avoid a little bit of duplication further down in the queue. Now, my usage of it here is relatively contrived, but I wanted to show you one of the small little perks of using Q for this kind of toolchain. We name, we name our framework, and then we start to add controls. I've called this control no Rockwood Academy images. Description, well, Rockwood Academy is risky. We don't trust them. Remediation path, don't use their images. Once you have a control, a control has rules. Here we have our first rule called no RKA images. And then we have a rule. So already with Q, we have access to multi-line strings. That means that we actually get a relatively pleasant experience for editing the regal code. It's worth pointing out that the Q team are working on embed-like syntax similar to what you get with Go embed. Meaning, in the future, we'll actually be able to do policy.regal and load it from its own file. That's really cool because it means that we'll get regal-based syntaxing because it's in a regal file. So, cool thing to look forward to in the future. Now, if you're going to go down the path of writing your own controls this way, there's a caveat. Remember, it's not built to do this quite yet. So you have to name your package RMO built-ins. This is just a caveat right now. I'll include an issue in the description if you want to track and see when that changes. Other than that, you're writing straight up Regal. That means you can actually use the Regal Playground to test your policies or even OPA Regal toolchain locally. It's up to you. Here, we define untrusted image, which pulls out the pod from our list of resources. We pull out the kind and make an assertion that this is only going to apply where the kind equals a pod. Next, we iterate over all the containers. Now, iterators in Rego are a little bit weird and you have to get used to them. Just know that when we reference something with a variable like I here, we're going to look over that list. All subsequent assertions will be against each item in that list. Next, we pull out the path to help us provide good debug and error messages for failing policies. We grab the image and we call the RKA repo check function against that image. This function is extremely trivial. We call the start with function to check if our image starts with ghcr.io slash academy. If we get a failure, we provide a message that tells the user what went wrong. And that's it. We set the rule language to Rego. We tell it which resources to match against. And we provide some description and remediation instructions for this particular rule. We have to provide a list of control IDs at the bottom. Hence, I'm using my private variable to loop that in. That's it. So how do we run this locally? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is the queue export of raw code.q. This now gives us a JSON object that we can store locally. And I'm going to store this in raw code.json. We're now in a position where we can say kubescape scan use from, which means that we want to use a local policy or framework, and I'm specifying rockcode.json. I'm then going to run that against my deployment YAML, and I'm just telling it to spit out the results as JSON in a control format rather than a resource format. We now have our report.json because of our flags, and we can see our high severity, no Rockwood Academy images, has failed on one resource for the Rockwood framework. Neat. 
So as we can see, if we want to remove this violation, we can update our deployment.yaml. And we're going to use a slightly more trusted Nginx image. Now we don't need all of these flags, we just need use from and a scan target, like so. And now we have no failed resource. So this could be a really interesting way to build up your own framework with your own controls. You can write your own Rego and ship them via Git. You can hook this into your CI process and improve your security posture step by step, control by control. Now, I do strongly encourage you just to use Armo Cloud, but if you need to go down the custom controls path and custom Rego, this is how to do it. So if you found this useful or you need some help, drop straight into the comment section. Until next time, have a great day. I'll see you soon.